Whip woo indeed. Oh, hello. Close. Uh, welcome back to Big Brother's Little Brother. I hope you're very well. It's day 16. The time is 7.47. No surprises about what we're talking about today. The strips on Jermaine's nose. Everyone's doing it. <laughs> we are joined by ex housemate Derek Lord is here. Thank you. And turn around. Got the name right. <laughs> Good. Um, Derek, it's lovely to have you. Thank you, thank you very, thank much. very much. Yeah. Okay, the Big Brother debate is still driving the global news agenda, uh, considering other events going around the world. Are either of you surprised at the speed and scale of this? Because it's taken all, I think it's taken all of us back a little bit. Well, I mean, I think in, um, in the context of the global agenda, probably not, because it just happened to be that um, Gordon Brown was in India. Mm. So, I mean, it therefore became a very global issue. Uh, but I'm not at all surprised that... Um, here, the issue has become very um, uh, topical. And this is largely because, and this is where I think that we must actually sort of congratulate Big Brother, because it does actually have educational content. It's not just trivial. Because we're now conducting a national debate. You know, millions of people are engaged in this. And what we've actually learned from this experience is that um, however subtle racism is, it's never, ever tolerable. Mm. Uh, yeah, of course. And that's definitely agreed. Um, We've got you guys to, to have a look at some headlines. Um, most of the press have expressed outrage at the actions of the girls, and rightly so, obviously. But there are a variety of angles, so we've got about three or four stories we want to look at today. The first is taken uh, yesterday, the 17th, I believe, in G2, The Guardian. This is from Jermaine Griff. Um, uh, the quote is, The problem is that most of the housemates are too dim to convey what a pain in the ass Shilpa is without appearing to persecute her. Now, this is a very interesting point. Um, what's your take on it? Uh, well, I read the whole piece, and I don't know, Jermaine's been, I mean, God bless her, Jermaine Greer, but I mean, she, she is a bit nuts, particularly when she talks about celebrities. Uh, when Steve Irwin, the, the Australian naturalist, died, um, she, uh, she said that it was the, uh, the animal kingdom getting their revenge on him. Uh, that she, she, she's not very sympathetic towards celebrities in peril or that are dead. Um, uh, and in this case, she, in the, she, the whole piece was basically sort of blaming yourself for having brought it upon her. And one, a, a, again, you do see um, a, in a lot of yeah. a, a instances where people are bullied, a lot of people say, well, they brought it on themselves. I don't think anybody, however annoying they were, you know, deserved that amount of bullying. Well, absolutely. Um, sorry, but I make the reverse point, um, and, and that's that their hatred of um, Shilpa Shilpa. Um, is based on probably three or four things. The first is beauty, the first is that she's uh, glamorous, and, and the third is that she's a damn sight more successful than they are. Mm. And, and they are largely insecure around her, and they don't really know how to deal with her. But it's quite telling that in looking around for a weapon to beat her with, the most effective one that they find, the most powerful one they find, is saying racist things. It is just to say things, you know, well, I mean, is the easiest thing to language. grasp at? Because but hang on, let's, let's, just, let's just not jump the gun here, because, I mean, I've just arrived. I'm <laughs> going to have my say. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't come all this way to sit here to listen to you. <laughs> now, no. Derek, there's no need to be rude. You, Derek. There's, there's, no, I have yes. no black and white racism here. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, I, I, I do not readily share the view that... Uh, Anything that Jade said was racist. Mm. I think, actually, uh, the agenda moved on, um, and it's probably legitimate to say that Daniel was outrageously uh, racist. Um, but I'm not entirely sure that she meant it, because I think when she went into the diary room and she realised what she'd said, um, I think she herself looked pretty sharp. Sure, but Derek, you've been in the house. You understand how what a claustrophobic atmosphere is and how the, the, the tiniest thing becomes irritating in exactly. there. And I suppose what it is, 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 is that people aren't intelligent enough to pick on something else that, 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 that actually displays their irritations around mm. people, so they pick on the most obvious thing, well, which, is, which is someone's differences. What, is yes. that, I mean, what else can, they, what else can they, they throw at her? Your eyebrows are very amazing, mm. your hair is incredibly glossy. You're astonishingly beautiful. Yeah, you're really rich. Dirk fancies you, the yeah. face man fancies you, but there's nothing else to hit her with, so I mean, you know, they're looking around for the most effective weapon. Okay, the Indian Times is up next. Uh, this is a, a quote from the Finance Minister, which is, uh, who, who is Mr. P. Uh, Shidam Baram. This will pass. The episode does not strain ties between the two governments and the people of India and the UK. I mean, that's extraordinary, really, isn't it? The yeah. Fact that well, that quote is basically, leave me alone. It's a busy day. I've got come to the <laughs> You're talking about Big Brother. He's it's big what? whatever. He's yeah. the only man that said something sensible about the whole thing. Okay. Yes. Yes. We move on to the Telegraph. Um, Neil Mitchley uh, said the uh, the current Big Brother hoo ha does raise some serious issues, but racism isn't one of them. Um, now I think his column alluded to the fact that uh, there are more important things to talk about, and there's more important uh, issues uh, to do with race, maybe out in the wider world, which is obviously true. But at the same time. He, he kind of played down the significance of the show, what you thought? Well, how, how many people have complained now? I mean, over 20,000 people think that it is a race issue. So that in itself makes it a race issue. We need to talk about why they think it is a racial issue. Um, 
that there's the next debate to have. Yeah, mm -hmm. but one of the things that's also quite revealing about it is because people have been able to see it for themselves and they're not relying on other people's interpretation of what was uh, mm -hmm. seen, actually a lot of people have very different views as to whether or not it was racist. But that's the beauty of Big Brother, isn't it? Everyone well, indeed. About it. It, it, well, it's like I said yesterday, the, the, I think the most important thing is, and we're talking about it now, and it's provoking debate every single time. And, and, and nobody's actually said it's what is... is everyone's talking about it. Nobody's actually been able to say to me, at any rate, I don't know whether you can, what is a racist? And my own definition of, of that is somebody that only sees colour rather than the individual. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it really applies here. Well, I think you've, 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 you've almost put your finger on it as well as is your definition. So every, I think everyone has their own definition about it, doesn't they? I mean, that's, I mean it's, it's such a, a wide subject. We're not gonna... well, it, well, apparently, I mean, if I say I want black coffee, I mean, that's a racist remark. I mean, so, I mean you, know, you can't be silly about this. I mean, let's try and have an Oxford dic dictionary definition of it, and I think we'll use mine for that purpose. OK, uh, on to the New York <laughs> Times, which is, I never thought I'd say on this show. Um, <laughs> This is, uh, this is what Big Brother is for, said the novelist Harry Kunzru. It holds up a mirror to national attitudes. If we don't like what we see, we ought to change. I always say that the show, as a whole, uh, is, is almost a reflection and, uh, and a condemnation almost sometimes on society in, in two different ways. Um, but is it a mirror on society? What do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, I... Well, well, I mean, it'd be a mirror on a, on a very pressurised mm. society. It would be a mirror on a society at war because you, you're looking at a group of people who are in incredibly highly pressurised situations. So, you know, in, in day to day life, people aren't as pressurised as the people in that house. You're mm. seeing people under extremely but, circumstances. But, but, but I do think that up and down the country, in Bradford, Leeds, Birmingham, whatever, that this sort of. Um, there's this kind of sort of spat happens between neighbours. I mean, uh, somebody was arrested who's well known the other day because she had a spat with a neighbour, which was allegedly sure. um, ra racist. And I think this, the, 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 it shocks people who live on Downing Street that people behave like this. And that's why this overreaction happens, because they don't normally come across Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I mean, we're going to go to call BBLB, but before we just do, I mean, it's, it's, it's just it's funny how a lot of my friends, even though I, I certainly think the show is a mirror society, a lot of my friends have been saying, well, hang on, they, I, these people don't reflect my views, and I'm white, and I'm middle class and I'm, uh, you know, I'm English and I'm proud, you know? That's why all those people who've complained is just, you know, that's, that's the best thing about it. Okay.